good morning. Welcome to another ASMR at 5. I got up a little bit late today. I got up at 4.37. I must be slacking off, but hold on one second here. These are the beans that I roast and ground myself. I usually put the rest. I found this to be an efficient system where I, rather than making two cups on separate occasions in the morning, I will make one full French press, drink one, and then put the rest of it in a thermal travel mug. And I'll have that a little bit later. And of course, you really need the vortex method, which optimizes the taste of the coffee. So you're basically holding chopsticks. Yes, I'm stirring my coffee with chopsticks. And this started because if you stir your coffee with a spoon in the house at 5 o'clock in the morning, you wake everybody up. It sounds like a bell ringing. And I started out by just using one chopstick, and then I went to two. And then I put them in, in the shape of a V, and I stir. And I found that it optimizes the taste of the coffee. Hence, the vortex method. I can see it's making two little, like, it looks like two funnel clouds. And you can hardly hear this, right? If I was doing this with a silver spoon, I'd wake up everybody in the house. So we'll just put these down right here. Let me put the top on my thermal travel mug. And as you know, just give me one second here. Ah, yes. Perfect. Ah. For those of you that are new to this, I occasionally do, I contribute to a series that I started called ASMR at 5. And for back of, lack of better words, I basically just get up and talk about whatever I want, whatever is on my mind as I wake up. No big agenda, obviously. And I try to do it peacefully. And I speak in a voice that is not going to wake up the house. So I'm sitting in the cozy nook right here which is just like a little bump out area of my kitchen where I will have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. I read here. I write in my journal here. I write every day. I've written a lot of my books here. Latest book, Millionaire Success Habits. I had tweeted, if you don't follow me on Twitter, uh, please do so. If you're easily offended, please don't follow me on Twitter. I lay down some real truth bombs for men there. It's mainly for men, it seems like. I have 70,000 subscribers, 96% are men. And the handful of women that I have, they know my shtick. And I appreciate them. So it's all good. But a lot of the things that I say really are truth bombs. They're not mild mannered truths. They're things that are revolutionary.
about two and a half years ago, I talked about getting unstuck. I made a date for myself, a PID, a Personal Independence Day. I set that date, I made it, which means that I wanted to make more income from my online and virtual sources than I do from cutting hair. I do that. So now, how can I put it this way? I do this for a living and I cut hair as a hobby, so to speak. But for those of you who've been following me for a long time, one of the things you know about me is that I do a lot of mentoring and I work with people, particularly with men. I help them succeed in ways that I have. I started on a journey to get unstuck, financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, and I reached my goal. It reminds me of Alexander the Great who got depressed because there was no more. His empire was so great, when, when there was nothing else to conquer, he was depressed. I'm not depressed, but I am reorganizing my life. My Financially, my life does not look like it did two years ago. I'm independent now. I don't have to cut hair for a living. I do it now because I love it. What a great place to be. When you can do your thing, you know, it's like that lottery question. Well, if you hit the lottery, if you won the $300 million lottery, would you still go to work the next day or would you call your boss and say, hey dude, take that job and shove it? <laughs> Not me, I love what I do. What I do never seemed like work to me. I worked hard at it, but it didn't seem like work. I was never watching the clock. That's the beautiful thing about doing what you love, what you're good at, and what you can make money at. you got to do all those things. Don't believe the bullshit. Do what you love and the money will follow. I love eating pizza. I just can't figure out a way to make money doing it. So I had to figure out what makes money. Like that nonsense book said back in the 80s, do what you love and the money will follow. That is bullshit. Do what makes money and the money will follow. That's the key. Doing what you love is called a hobby. If you can turn that into something that makes money and makes an abundance of money, not just getting by, don't being just over broke, always being able to pay your bills the second they come in, being able to eat in a nice restaurant, being able to travel when you want, go where you want when you want. I live that kind of life now. It's nice. It feels good. And it's thoroughly responsible. It's not like this carefree kind of thing. So I still drive the Sultan XB. I love the darn car. When you start becoming financially independent, does that mean you got to go up to you know, a Mercedes or get the Lamborghini? Heck no. I'm very practical. I always said, when did it become important to drive from point A to B in style? There was a point in my life where I was happy just to get from point A to point B with $500 and $1,000 cars. I can drive whatever I want. Well, I can't drive the G20 right now. I do like that. But I like things where parts are super easily accessible. That's the practical part of me. So now I'm independent. I do what I love. I make money doing what I love. I enjoy that. I'm now at a point where since I got unstuck, because I said this for two years, I used to say, in 2016, I was telling you that 2017 is the year you get unstuck. 2017 came and went. And I, now I'm saying 2019 is the year that you get unstuck. I am unstuck now. Goal reached. That happened a while ago. So what do you do? Where do you go? Once you're unstuck, where do you go? You have to make new goals. 
you heard from me not long ago that those goals are now called my to-do list. So I got rid of the terminology goal and set, started saying my to-do list. Let me uh, just show you something. I, I write every day, every day nonstop. I fill up these yellow pads. I write until they are every page is full. I don't do it every day. I write every single day until the pad is full. This will be full probably within another. This is a brand new pad. This will be full within about four or five days. I will take this pad off, put it in the pile of my work, put a new blank pad on here, and I start working on a new pad with ideas. Those ideas become businesses. Those ideas become books. Those idea become become uh, those ideas become pamphlets. They might become videos, but basically they become content. So there's a constant flow, constant flow. Did you ever notice, like a lot of times when you take water out of a faucet or a garden hose, you let it run for a little bit, right? Because you just want, if you want a cool glass of water, you let it run a little bit longer. The, the water in a garden hose might be like stale and, you know, warm from the sun hitting it. You let it run a while until the cool water comes out and it feels better. Your mind is the same way. It needs to keep flowing. If you can only write one or two sentences today, that's okay, because tomorrow you're doing three sentences. The next day you're doing four sentences. Next thing you know, you're filling up a yellow pad with your ideas and your content, and you keep it going, and I do this every day. This is a lifestyle for me. It's not a chore anymore. I get up, I have my coffee, I do this. But the more that flows, and I, the easier it gets, but I find that the more that you write your ideas down, the easier you, the easier it becomes to verbalize them. That's important. Don't let your mouth be the first outlet of your ideas. Your ideas need to come out of your hand and your pen first. Does that make sense for you that are working with content or struggling with content or ideas or creativity? So now the to-do list is this. I'm unstuck. I don't have to cut hair. I do it because I love it and absolutely love it. I can't imagine myself doing anything else. I remember when I did it for a living and I 50-50 liked it. Now that I don't have to do it, I like it more. It's a great place to be. Think about that. So now, I need to reach another level of unstuck. I'm currently doing carnivory, all meat. This is week number five of all meat, which means I'm looking for a shredded look. Not a skinny, emaciated, sick, concentration camp look. I'm not looking for that. I've always had a, a muscular look, whether I was chunkier. Now look at me. I mean, you can see I'm trim. I'm thin. I like this, man. I went from wearing extra large shirts to large shirts. Now even the large are loose on me. Look at this. They're loose. But underneath... I'm still muscular, I'm still symmetrical, I feel good, I feel healthy. I will start introducing carbs back into my diet. I cheat one day a week. I even hate to say the word cheat because it sounds negative. But one day a week I cheat. So I went to a music fest this past week and I had a sausage sandwich on the street and I had a a, uh, a taco and I felt great felt great but for me just the excessive carbs think about this carbs a carb addiction is nothing but a sugar addiction 
his carbs turn to sugar. And I was getting something out of it. I no longer am bloated. I don't feel gassy ever. And I was the fartmeister. <laughs> Nothing like that going on. Nothing. I went from, well, you saw the weight loss going from a 42 inch waist. And I wasn't a lard ass either. I was bulky, like muscular bulky. But I've trimmed down. So when I first started these videos, I was probably at a 38, 39 inch waist. I'm now at about, I had to buy some new clothes, 36 inch waist, and they are now falling off of me if I don't wear a belt. So I'm aiming for the 34 inch waist at this point. And you want that, that 1.6 golden ratio. In other words, the shoulders and chest, you put a tape measure around like this. This measurement here aesthetically looks the best when it's 1.6%, not 1.6%. This is one, this is 1.6. You understand what I'm talking about. And that is what they call the golden ratio. And that is uh, based upon the statue of uh, Michelangelo's David, considered to be the perfect male physique. And that's what I'm going for. I used to have that where your chest measurement is 10 to 12 inches bigger than your waist measurement. And as you get older, you're going to find that waist and belly are two different things. I got a friend who always bragged about having a 34-inch waist, but he's got a 40-inch belly. It's like, dude, don't even talk to me about the 34-inch waist. You got this thing hanging over your belt. I don't want to hear it. You look like a barrel. Stop it. But that all depends upon your body type as well. So physically, I have whooped myself into shape completely, 100%, not just modified, not just cut down a couple, couple inches. My body now is unrecognizable from the body that I had two years ago. My income is unrecognizable from the income that I had two years ago. My love life is unrecognizable. It, it's just on another planet. I'm free, I'm single, I feel great, I'm available, my game is back. Zero issues with attracting women, zero issues. Many of the issues that I had in the past, I created those issues. They've been removed. And I love it. I feel great. At closer to 60 than 50, I'm at the top of my game. So now, the goal is this, and I said this a few months ago, on my to-do list, and I want to be consistent with my language and my vocabulary here, my goal is to be able to make one million dollars in a 12-month period. Yes, here I am, closer to 60 than 50, and I've made millions in my lifetime. But I've never made a million dollars in 12 months. Is it easy to make? A million dollars? Yes. If you take many, 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 many years, you can. Of course you can. But can you do it in 12 months? For all the gurus out there, they act as if you can do it quickly. That's nonsense. My goal, and it's competing against myself, I have never done it in 12 months, so now I want to do that. And I'm working towards that. And I know it's not going to happen cutting hair. It's going to happen with content and marketing and sales. That I know to be true. And that's what I'm working towards. I'm not trying to do it. I'm doing it. It's like the Yoda thing. Do or not do. There is no try. I can't believe I got up at 4.37 today. I must be slacking off. Although I did have an old-fashioned last night. 
with uh, whiskey, orange, orange rind, a little bit of a lemon rind, cherry, and a little bit of the juice from the maraschino cherry muddled in a glass with some crushed ice. And then I put it in, a, in another glass with ice cubes. A splash of, I put two shots of whiskey in and uh, a splash of seltzer that I make from my uh, soda stream. Man, it was good. But I kind of feel it because I have quote unquote detoxed from all alcohol. I don't want anything affecting my brain in any way because I don't need alcohol to relax. If I do it, I, I, it's because I want it. I don't need it. And that feels good. Now, as far as coffee is concerned, I need my coffee. But it's kind of funny. There's a lot of people who say, don't even bother me until I had my first cup of coffee. Here, I start talking before I have my first cup of coffee and I'm having it with you and I can't think of a better person to have my cup of coffee with than you. So thank you for joining me this morning. Let me take another sip. I've been roasting my own coffee. I get it from uh, uh, Sweet Maria's. Buy four or five pounds of different coffees. I roast them in a pan on the stove top. You might have seen me do this before until they're almost black. They're almost like burning. They look like they're going to burst into flames at any minute. And then I take them outside, shake the hull off in a colander, put them in an airtight container for two days, and then I grind them up in my little hand grinder, put them in the French press, and the coffee is nothing less than amazing. You should try it sometime. I I'm in love with this kind of coffee. Although I like all coffee, this is my absolute favorite. Absolutely love it. And I keep it in the French press for nine minutes, so it's really extracting a lot of flavor and a lot of the caffeine, of course. So by six o'clock, I'm buzzing. So when I'm done here, what I'm going to do is start writing. I read a little bit. That kind of primes the pump a little bit. I read and then I start writing. And then the content gets created from there. Things are going well at the, here's an update, things are going well at the salon. The chill chair is profitable and fun. The mentoring is going fantastic. Make an appointment. If, if you want your hair cut and a beard trim or a shave, come to me. People come from 20 states and seven countries to sit in my chair. And that is 100% verified by the de front desk staff. You'll like where I'm at. The chill chair is in a private, peaceful, quiet room. And it would be my honor and my pleasure to host you and make you look handsome clean you up and give you some great ideas for attacking this world. And uh, I'm going to fill in for a friend at another shop um, who has an open chair. I'll be filling in for them and helping them out a little bit. And that'll be pretty cool too. I'm pretty happy about that. 21 convention is coming up in October for any man I'm begging you right now. It will change your life. I'll put a link for the 21 convention. It's expensive. It's a four-day conference. You need to go. If you went through a breakup, a divorce, or having a hard time, if you want to kind of reboot your life as a man, mentally, emotionally, physically, your game, your career, your diet, your nutrition, how you approach life, how you approach women, then you need to be at the 21 convention. You'll see me there. Hey, have a great day. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it, especially those that are going through some tough shit right now. 
it was a rough night for you. I slept great, and I know many of you didn't sleep great. And there was a time in my life where I wasn't sleeping real well because of all kinds of nonsense going on. And a lot of that was some of the complications that I had with making things more complicated. It's like my friend Richard Cooper says that human beings are great at two things. Number one, complicating their lives. Number two, justifying the reasons why they complicate their lives. It's time to get unstuck and it's time to stop complicating your life. Don't make things harder for yourself. Make things easier for yourself. I'm also looking for sponsors for the new video series. If you're interested in sponsoring a video, I have a very, very solid audience. If you're a business owner, private message me, gb at georgebruno.com. Have a productive day, and I will see you again soon at another ASMR at five.